Hey Clash Rates, sneak peek, day number two is here and we are having a new troop coming to the clan capital. The Flying Fortress is going to be a powerhouse in your offense which you can use and unlock in those new districts. We're going to talk today about the Balloon Lagoon and the Builders Workshop. Those both districts are not only giving us a new couple of defenses but as well are unlocking a couple of new spells and unlocking a couple of new troops which we're going to take a look at. But before we're jumping into that, we're starting things off with the new Gold Pass skin, which is going to be this Minor Queen. And if you like those videos which I'm doing, and if you're buying anything in the shop, any offers or the Gold Pass, make sure you use the creator code. And if you'd like to support me, make sure you to use code ITSU. But let's clarify a couple of things first, before we're jumping into those two new districts. The first thing is that when you're actually leaving a clan capital or a clan or you might get kicked out, you're going to keep the number of how much you actually catered towards this clan capital in your district. With this number, you should be able to find a new clan pretty quickly to just make sure that it's not too bad of a loss. The next thing is the Gold Pass perks are working for the Forge. Not only the time, but as well the resource reduction is both working for the Forge, which means the Gold Pass is even more worth it. So as I said, if you think about buying it, make sure to use the creator code. But now let's get started with the really, really nice, cool two new districts in this video. Before that, you already can see you need to have Capital Hall level 4 and level 5 to unlock those. Which means we always need to get back to our clan capital to keep upgrading that or like to keep upgrading our capital peak because that's how you're unlocking more and more districts. Let's jump to the maxed out version of the district and we can see already again a new district which is looking different. We have a lot of water on this one and again a couple of... Uh, mountains on this far right side which look pretty cool as well all of those defenses can be found in the balloon lagoon we have obviously our cannon up to our air bombs and then mega tesla and so on but as well the rocket artillery same as the single inferno tower so those are going to be the defenses which can be found in the balloon lagoon but not only that you're going to be able to unlock the skeleton barrel which is uh, another squad troop what does this mean? Well, you always have three skeleton barrel, which deal damage when they're going to connect and they're going to drop skeletons. The next troop is the rocket balloons, which you can or like which you know already. You always have it again in a squad, which means you're going to have two rocket balloons in one big pack. The next one is the flying fortress. That is the new troop which is going to come to this game mode. And it's 100 housing space. That's a lot. It's going to send out um, skeleton gliders to not only deal damage with those and distract defenses, but no, it's going to attack on its own as well and can really deal a lot of damage. You can see it right now on your screen with those flying fortresses just wrecking through those defenses and especially if you have to like get over um, some obstacles like water, like mountains, it's pretty nice to get them just flying across and right going into the heart of the base. That's exactly what is happening right here. Another heal spell to keep them alive and getting even more value on this one. But there's one more spell which is going to get unlocked in the Balloon Lagoon as well, which is the Lightning Spell. The Lightning Spell is one of the only spells which is not going to last over two attacks. No, instead it's just a quick strike, dealing some damage and that's it. Next district is actually the Builder's Workshop. The Builder's Workshop is again having a couple of nice defenses. But there's actually a new defense in this one. We have already talked about this in sneak peek number one. But I never really showed you how it is actually working. And that's the Blast Bow. You can see this big expo looking defense. It is crazy, crazy strong. The Blast Bow is a really big range defense. Which having it which having an inner circle as well where it cannot target anything and it's dealing splash damage. You want to take those out first. That's a big objective in taking down buildings if you think about that. But now let's take a look at the defenses and uh, take a look at the troops and spells which you're going to unlock. The siege card is one of them. The siege card, one of my favorite troops. It is really strong, it can deal a lot of damage and it's just a nice way to power up um, power up your attack. The same as the super packer, you know it from the builder base. 
dealing a lot of damage, being quite tanky and exploding when getting taken down to deal even more damage. The next one is the Frost Spell. And the Frost Spell is by far my most favorite spell in this game mode. You want to know why? There's a pretty easy answer. You can use it in such a creative way. For example, you can freeze freaking water. That's right, you can just place it on water, it's getting frozen, you can see the deployment area is going to get increased, and you can just get your Pegas across the lake without even deploying anything else. That's really, really cool, it's really helpful, and as I said, it's a creative spell. What means? You can use it to freeze things like the water, but you can freeze, or frost more like, frost defenses as well. The frost means the attack speed of the defenses which are covered by the spell are getting slowed down. So if you're able to cover a couple of key defenses like the rocket artillery or even the blast bow, you're going to look great. But now let's take a look at actually how those friendly challenges uh, work and using those new troops because a lot of people said yesterday that the gameplay does feel like it's Town Hall 6 or Town Hall 7, which is understandable because we only took troops from the first two districts. Now we actually talk about uh, troops from District four and uh, 3 and 4 as well. And I mean, we have two more districts to go as well. On this one, we have a lot of air targeting stuff on the top right. So I want to send a quick strike, an air, like a, a quick strike, a ground kill squad into that area to take down a lot of air defenses, to take down um, the air bombs and so on. And obviously our big enemy, which is this blast bow. So for that, we're using a ground based army and I'm using the frost spell to make sure that this really big range, those big range defenses like the giant cannon and the blast bow have no chance of really taking or dealing too much damage to our troops. The next important thing is, which I feel like kind of got left out as well, is you can post friendly challenges and you can attack them on your own, which is a huge difference to the home village where you can only post friendly challenges and then someone else have to attack them. On this one, you can attack them, your claimants can attack them, it's totally up to you. You can make it that you're attacking it, your claimant is attacking this, you're attacking it, and so on. You can make it that only you are attacking it. It's totally up to you guys how you would like to run this. The next one, and as I said, this is a really big objective in this game mode, is increase the deployment area. This is such an important thing, you can see exactly for that I brought those battle ramps. Those battle ramps are destroying walls, increasing the deployment area, which is really important. And again, I want to mention how can you do that? Well, increasing the deployment area is always the rule, the rule of thumb is pretty much that as soon as the ground troop can reach that new area, which means you can actually deploy troops over there. That's kind of how it works. You can see as well, we have a huge now deployment area, which is great. And the next cool thing is, not only took down already the first blast bow, no, but the second blast bow is right in front of our nose, so we can take down that really quickly as well. Now, let's scout. Let's see how this base looks like. After taking down the top side, we already took down a lot of air targeting defenses. So I think the next step should be actually an air attack. On this, from this far right side, we can see there are air bombs. Yes, there is the blast bow, which all can target air. But we have the Frost Spell. With the Frost Spell, we can just hit a lot of those defenses, and that's a really important thing. If you're putting your defenses too close together, the Frost Spell is getting incredible value, which is not to be underestimated. So the Frost Spell, as I said, a really cool spell to use, a really cool spell to work around with, and I think a really creative spell overall. For us now, we're trying to build up our army, which is going to be two air fortresses and our flying fortresses, and a couple of archers. Why check the archers? I have to say, I think the archers are actually one of the strongest troops in this game mode. Um, the reason for it, pretty simple, because as soon as you're increasing the deployment area, you can actually deploy them inside the base, which is giving you access to defenses, like, for example, the air bombs at the top side. One or two archers and those buildings are down, which are having incredible a lot of value. So you can really strategically snipe certain buildings out of the way with your archers, which is really nice. At the same time, we are using our flying fortresses at the top left side, just to make sure that all of those defenses are getting taken down. As soon as they are grouping up, actually, we can use our heal spell in just a second to make sure that we can take down this part of the district. Another important note is that around about, you're, you will need three to four attacks um, for a district. If you might be new to the game, 
might be a little bit more. But 3 to 4 attacks is like round about the attacks you're looking for. If it's 2 attacks, you're already look like you're doing insane actually. If it's 1 attack, to be honest I have never seen this, <laughs> Let, let's put it this way. So 3 starring a district in 1 attack is pretty much impossible, except the district is as in... It's having like the worst layout ever. So 3 to 4 attacks is like the rule of thumb, so you can really make sure that you're playing together, coordinating together with your clan mates, because at the end of the day, this game is getting called Clash of Clans, which is already telling you that it's going to be a social game. So it's not a solo player game. As well, for us, as soon as those flying fortresses are getting taken down, they're going to spawn a lot of skeletons. For us, that's not that helpful to be honest because we have two giant cannons against them which are dealing a lot of splash. So that's kind of how it's looking. So let's jump into the, the scouting phase again. And to be honest, at this point, this air defense is really low. So we might be able to just use the lightning to take it out. And then not only that, but we should be able to just use rocket loons because we have not used them yet in this episode. Because there is no air targeting splash damage left in this one. So it should be pretty nice for us to take all of those defenses out with a couple of rocket loots. Minions for cleanup purposes and then we should be looking golden. Let's use some uh, heal spell as well to make sure our rocket loons are staying healthy. And with that we can get ready for the next attack and hopefully finish off this district to get this district down in three attacks. And that's pretty much it. So let's see if we can get it done. Obviously, rocket loons, you try to like approach them surgically. We're going to try to use shield spells in the locations where all of those loons are going to group up, come together. That's exactly that spot right there. With that heal, we're going to cover all of those loons. And then even more rocket loons are coming in. Some minion in behind. And you can see as well compartments which are not opened by wall breakers or like by the battle ram. You have no deployment access into them. So for example, the the, um, the the compartment where those loons are coming from, it's not open. So ground troops cannot reach into it, which means the deployment area is not reaching into it either. So as I said, if you want to have this access to the base, if you want to have the deployment area right in the core of the base, you need to bring those battle ramps or you can use jump spurts as well to make sure that that's going to work. Either way, that was uh, this district. Nice three stuff from us. And that's already for today's video. Let me know how you liked it. Obviously, there's two more districts to come. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys back tomorrow for the next video. Uh, until then, see ya and bye-bye.